This is about you. The infinite you. The part of you that can't be seen, can't be smelled, touched, or tasted. But you know you feel it. Who you really are. In a world lost to confusion, a universe that's partly illusion, when we look for meaning, we often simply find more delusion. Ground your consciousness in the sounds of the universe, a podcast about your true omnificence. There's a universe inside each of us, but our beliefs keep us constrained to the edges of what we can imagine. The Innerverse Podcast is your portal to that infinite realm of ideas. I'm Chance Garden and I'll be your host as we serve up inspirational sound waves from the brightest minds with the highest vibes. And we keep searching for the empowering perspectives we need to create our greatest masterpiece of all. Our lives. Welcome to the one within all and aloha to our Interverse tribe out there. I'm your fearless host, Chance, and there's more than enough spring in Southwest Missouri today to supercharge my enthusiasm for life. And I've hardly been able to wait for this empowering message we're delivering here today. Longtime listeners will be savvy to the fact that I'm a massive music festival fan and I love to bring those worlds out of the campgrounds and back to Babylon. Because the magic that happens when like-minded creators come together tends to amplify the love vibes to an altogether infectious level. And before you know it, you've got garden variety wooks and wastrels leveling up into fully-fledged superstar artists. And that's just a beautiful thing. Our guest today has just such an event to promote as the workshop coordinator for the upcoming Backwoods Festival at Mulberry Mountain. This human being has an amazing philosophy about festivals in general that may get you feeling like you did after your first peak experiences. A holistic lifestyle coach that might just be a fairy incarnating as a human, she's an excellent new friend of mine and teacher who can help you stretch deeper, getting us out of our heads and into our bodies where the fun is at. So I hope you're as excited as I am for me to introduce to you Aubrey Monk Warren. This maven of Raven brings the boost to our booty shake and the medicine to our movement by creating space for yoga at festivals as a teacher so that others can keep their healing practices going uninterrupted or discover them for the first time, even though they're at a weekend-long party. She also helps those who have never considered the benefits of self-work into greater alignment with their selves, their spines, and their minds, expanding them with guided meditations, righteous information, and mindful kindness in action. This Backwoods Festival I mentioned is the very same thing I told you guys about last year, except now bigger and better, taking place from May 31st to June 2nd this year. If you join us on the mountain, you can expect to see Interverse friends Cadella, Flintwick, Deep Sequence, local Arkansas bands galore, and a huge lineup of diverse nationally touring musical acts ranging from Yonder Mountain String Band to G. Jones. So whether you're a fan of raves, jam bands, or folk tunes, there's definitely something for everyone, not to mention the amazing experience of camping on that mountain and hanging out with all the people. You can also get on Facebook Live or YouTube to check out some of the live streams I've done recently to hear more about Backwoods, including one I just put out with past Interverse guest Jamie Seed, where we hung out with some of the other producers of the Backwoods event to talk about why we're so stoked on it. I've also got a new series on magically manifesting more abundance and money into our lives with myself and recent guest Pharaoh Tahar, and it's an experiment we can all do together, but at our own pace, so go tune into those videos on YouTube or Facebook. By the time this episode reaches you, we'll have done many of these daily check-ins on that community experiment, and probably produced a few miracles and synchronicities too. Don't forget to look at the show notes for links to AubreyWarren.com and Backwoods Festival. 
And also check the notes for the link to sign up for Interverse Plus, where you can donate five bucks a month to the show and get double length episodes in return. Find that on patreon.com forward slash Interverse and hop on board with us. If you love the show, you'll be really glad to be getting twice as much of it. Now it's time to open up our hearts and spray a big sparkly pile of love glitter from our imaginations across space and time to shower our guest today in divinely inspired bliss energy and make her feel at home on her first visit. She's sticking the fairy dust to the man and loosening up the screws where she can. Weaver of wonderful workshops, yoga flow state freestyler, Aubrey Monk Warren. It's an honor to have her here on the show. Welcome to the Universe, Aubrey, and thanks for being here. Oh, Chance. Your intros are always one of my, I love the whole show, but I always love how you bring such beautiful reflection to the person that you're interviewing. I have been listening to the show in, um, in preparation for this conversation because I had never heard of you before we got linked up from the, from the Backwoods producers. And so As a good researcher myself, I had to do my research on you. And I feel like we're already friends because the conversations that you're having on a weekly basis where all of these people are some of my favorite subject matters. So I am like overjoyed to be with you right now. Overjoyed. Uh, Me too, especially because even us having this conversation came about from a beautiful opportunity that the organization organization you work with provided to me in the form of letting me bring Interverse to the event with a booth and to do a live panel podcast, which probably you'll be joining me for if uh, if I'm lucky, along with a lot of people. I think it's going to be like this cool community creator hangout where we bounce between a lot of people's opinions and perspectives. And it'll be, I don't know, I'm looking for a fun open forum type situation. And getting to experiment in that realm has a lot to do with you know, people like you sticking up for me and a few others that I know in the organization that are like, yeah, let's bring him. And I love the, uh, also I'm getting pushed to do new things with some of the live stream promotions we've done and leveling up a lot just from this opportunity. Very, very, very grateful. And we do have to make sure we talk about backwoods specifically, not just from a advertiser's standpoint or a marketing standpoint, but because there is like a real spiritual thread here with Mulberry Mountain, you and me both in our experiences there before we even knew each other, which only came about recently, that uh, the entire emphasis of the show, it actually evolved out of the type of conversations I would have at events like Wakarusa in the past or like Backwoods of the past, big festivals I go to where I meet someone that would be unlikely for me to meet in my daily walk because you're kind of like people like you are pretty epic and rare and there's only a few of you produced in any one town. So like I already know the ones in my town and getting out into the festival world, I meet all the super sparkly rainbow unicorn people. <laughs> so, so let's talk about it. Let's talk about backwards. Uh, so, you know, this really is, is rooted into the inspiration of why I even started the podcast to bring that connection out to the world and what got you connected to the Epic Festival lifestyle and to Backwoods specifically. What do you do for them now? Okay. Well, before I dive into what I do for Backwoods, I really feel like I need to give you some backstory here because as I've been listening to your podcast in preparation, you talk about little synchronicity and synchronistic moments that seem to happen within the festival life and when what seemed to happen at festivals specifically and even leading up to the opportunity and the experience. And I really, really, truly feel like being right here right now has been a whole cluster of synchronistic moments in my life to where we're, it's all leading up to, like you said, this big magical moment up on the mountain because so many of us came from there and are now being pulled back to there. So just to give you a little bit of backstory, um, my husband and I have been married for when we're going to backwoods, like uh, two weeks after backwoods will be our 17 year wedding anniversary. So we, um, music brought us together. He was a DJ in a hip hop band. Whenever I met him, he was, a he was DJ mastermind. So if people who see him on the mountain, if you call him DJ mastermind, he'll really crack up about that. So, so he, he was, he was this DJ and we were at live shows and music festivals all the time. Um, we started out at Austin city limits where we live in, we live in Fort Worth, Texas. So we started out like Austin city limits and South by South by Southwest. But as you know, those festivals aren't camping festivals. 
right? They're, 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 you go, you go and you dive into the music, you go to your hotel or your friend's house, and then you come back the next day for the music. And um, so what happened? I'm going to fast forward you. We had kids. We became adults, right? And we <laughs> fell into the roles of society, of the so-called real world. <laughs> exactly. The so-called real world of husband and wife, mom and dad. And I lost myself. I lost myself completely. And we had a couple really, really, really hard years in our marriage when our kids were really young. Um, you know, <laughs> thank God, thank the universe, whatever, that neither one of us did anything stupid that we would have regretted during that time. But we came to this point in our relationship, uh, and I think it was like in 2011, where the kids were just a little bit old enough to leave them. And so my husband said, you know what, let's, let's go to a music festival this summer. He had gone to um, Bonnaroo when I was pregnant with our youngest. And he's like, that was just such an amazing experience. Let's go. And he found, he, um, he bought tickets to Wakarusa for us to go. And that was going to be a way for us to try to rebuild something that was broken. What year was this? I think we were just contemplating. I'm going to have to go back and look at pictures and look at dates, but I think it was 2011. I think it was 2011. Back in the heyday. Yeah, the yeah. Heyday. And and we didn't go VIP. We just went GA, you know. And you were talking about how you, you grow on your festival, um, your knowledge of what to bring. I mean, that first year, we didn't bring any shade with us. We, did, we forgot our pillows. I mean, it was just one of those things that we totally uh, did not know what we were doing that first festival. Yeah, in the live stream with Jamie, we brought up the fact that you literally level up on your self-reliance by going to festivals because you have to not die for like a few days living outside. <laughs> oh, exactly. And it and it was it was hot as Hades while while we were there. And so it, 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 yeah, yeah. We but that should be a turn on to make you want to go, not a turn off. I tell you, <laughs> because you won't die. I mean, I'm mostly kidding. There, other than you know, self-inflicted injury, you'll be safe because you'll be surrounded by a bunch of loving hippies and ravers and rainbow people of all types who want to make sure that you're happy and having a great time and not dying. So no worries. It's like a safety. It's a safe place to learn that self-reliance, I should say. Yeah, we totally went unprepared, but the festival community rose up to support us, right? And we, it seems like everything that we were missing, we ended up having by the end of the festival because the, the, everybody, it was like the, the universe, I, I call them now the festival gods. The festival gods <laughs> rose up and like cradled us in their arms. I know of these festival gods you speak of. Yes, absolutely. So I'll never forget this moment, the last day of our festival that first year and sitting in my husband's lap and reminiscing on the experience that we had had. And I had this flash and, and back when I was in college, I, I was in an abusive relationship. And I, when I came out of that abusive relationship, I was in the darkest hole of my life. And a, a gay friend of mine, grabbed me by the arm and took me into the gay club world. And in the gay club world, and I'm not saying, I'm not saying it has anything to do with sexuality. I just, the point of me sharing that is I was just really letting go of all of my, um, how do I put this? Patriarchal Midwest upbringing roots and allowed myself just to tear down all of these barriers. And during that time, I started experimenting with different substances. And when I was a speech minor in college and I ended up doing a speech on club drugs, it was an information, it was a speech to inform on club drugs and the history and the prohibition of all of them. And within that, I learned that there was one specific and I'm not going to name them because I don't know about censorship in regards to your thing, Chance, I don't want to get us in trouble. I think that knowledge is power and I would never censor any form of knowledge because 
when it comes to the war on drugs, I mean, I'm sure this can come up later in the show more if we want to go in depth to it, although we have tons of branches on the tree to explore. Just I'll say about the the whole war on drugs, it's the um, moratorium on knowledge that is what does the most harm. Harm reduction is empowering people through understanding what it is that they may or may not have access to if something comes up. And uh, we all, regardless of what the laws are, we all have the freedom to choose what we do with our consciousness and what substances we do or don't take. And, you know, respectfully, we shouldn't be bringing that type of thing to a place where it's not permitted or where it's being requested to not be. But all that being said, it exists in our community more than in other communities, but also in a way that is in some regards positive. And I think many ways positive. And I think that's what you're about to get into. And I, I think it's a fascinating topic. And I just wanted to give that caveat that we don't need to censor ourselves here. I mean, we're all adults here. And if we're not, <laughs> we're not adults, we're very attuned individuals to have even found this podcast while not being an adult yet. So <laughs> good, good for all of you. Well, I appreciate that because I really want I really want to inspire people with this knowledge or, or plant people with seeds of this knowledge who maybe didn't know it already. So I appreciate being able to open and speak freely. So when I was in that speech class in college, and I did all the research about all of these other all of these substances that you find in the club and party atmosphere, what I learned was the substance that is MDMA, which is um, more widely known as ecstasy or Molly, was actually created for marriage therapy. I'm going to say that again. The drug MDMA was created for marriage therapy. And because almost all substances that you see were actually created by some pharmaceutical company before they were outlawed. And so they all had some purpose. So to get back on point, I was sitting with my husband afterwards and we had we we had indulged in MDMA during this festival. And I shared with him, I was like, dude, I'm like, do you know that that MDMA was actually created for marriage therapy and marriage counseling? And look at the magic that happened. Our, I mean, we were on the brink of divorce and what that substance did for us that weekend was it gave us the opportunity to be, it floods your brain with dopamine. And so then you're able to have all of those hor- those hard conversations that you haven't been having. It all just comes out. It literally is automatic. I want to point that out. I've experienced what you're talking about. It is incredible. It is the difference between re- constricting your heart and your emotions and finally letting them all out. And the beauty of it is it always goes well. Whenever you do finally let it all out, especially if you're doing that, together because you're both having sort of the dopamine is literally like a spiritual dopamine and serotonin are literally considered spiritual um, molecules in terms of like your spiritual connection, which is your connectivity connectivity to others around you and your empathy is all enhanced by those chemicals. And so, yeah, I love what you're saying because it's totally true. I mean, unfortunate that the substances that do the most good and could be used sparingly to give someone a massive boost are the ones that are, made illegal and the ones that do terrible side effects and keep you addicted to them for life are the ones that were prescribed, but such is the way things are. So this isn't medical advice. I'm not telling you to go out and find ecstasy. I would say if that ends up being something you wanted to do in your life, always be super sure what you've got and look into testing for yourself. I mean, harm reduction is what we want to emphasize here since we are on the topic. Wouldn't you agree? Absolutely. Know what you're getting. Be smart about it. Be mindful about it. And, 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 and so that we, in that moment, in that moment, we made a conscious decision to festival, pick one festival on an annual basis, invest in it. And it would be our form of marriage therapy, marriage counseling every year. So instead of on a weekly basis, going to a counselor or a therapist where you just end up talking in circles the whole time. We would save that money instead of going to a therapist and we would invest in going to a festival once a year. And so we did. Would you agree that would you agree that the substance aspect of it actually fades into the background and then even fades away as you realize that this is just a portal to a power that you already had for yourself to connect and open up? Oh, absolutely. Because that's my experience as well. Cause like I will say, like I continue going to festivals, but 
I don't do things that I did at festivals when I first started going anymore. And yet I have an even greater time than ever before, including having, I think like there's a lot of myths out there. Like you need basically substance help to even have the energy to get through a festival wrong. And that's why I really want to talk to you about what you do as a instructor, because what you do bringing yoga to the festival is how people actually channel the real energy, the not sort of artificial medicine energy, not that it doesn't have its place and can be mad healing, but we can do this for ourselves and movement is the medicine. Absolutely. <laughs> yes. And that's the point. That's the point. So along this journey of us regularly going to festivals, right? I, I was a yoga teacher and I was, I was going through with my yoga training and my exper experience and I, I found something that's called conscious dance. Have you ever heard of it before? Oh, yeah. I mean, in different forms, it's something that is pretty intuitively a part of this community. And I'm so glad you're going there because I want to talk about it. Tell us what... What is conscious dance? <laughs> yeah. So, well, okay. So I ended up in my very first conscious dance practice in the middle of a yoga workshop. I just happened to stumble in and I have a background in dance. And as I was doing this practice, I found myself sobbing as I danced, laughing as I danced in this space of literally a static Ex like ecstasy and joy that I had only experienced that state of mind ever before on a substance. And so all of a sudden, like my mind was and realized, oh my gosh, there's a pathway to get to these places in my brain that I had always used substances for, but you have to learn what the secret sauce is and exactly what you just said. It was movement and breath all together. So what conscious dances is um, it's a therapeutic movement modality. And let, 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 let's just pause here for a second, Chance, and remembering the fact that like dance has been used within ritual and ceremony and celebration since ancient indigenous times. Like this shit is primal. It's in our DNA. Yes, it is in our DNA. So conscious dance, all it is, is there's two rules. Uh, or no, three rules, no shoes, no booze, no chit chat on the dance floor, meaning you're sober when you do it. It's a sober practice. And the music is made to where it's like a wave of music where it starts off in ambient, it goes up to chaos and it comes back down to ambient it again. And the music is made in a way, in a wave where you're able to experience every mental, emotional state within the body in a safe container and express them. Because we as humans have been conditioned to store all of our emotions instead of expressing them, okay? And this is a completely different subject and conversation that maybe we can talk on in the second part. But like literally, that's one of the things that's keeping us sick as a culture is all of the, the, the like the pent up angst intention and stuff that we have stored inside of our bodies that we're not releasing. It comes down to actually being as simple as I like blue, but I don't like red. That's actually what we're talking about here. <laughs> That's yeah, the block. I mean, and whenever you get to music, there are, there's a correlation between every frequency and every color. And when we're talking about music actually being a pathway to release pent up emotion, we mean that you're not conditioned to be averse to the frequency as it as it is expressed in this song but maybe through media you have been conditioned to be averse to it as it comes at you through color as it comes at you through other various symbols that represent that chakra center essentially and so music can literally just bypass all of the left brain filters that are there from our conditioning that keep us separated from our natural energy and it just goes straight into the right brain where it's received in the wholeness and understood in totality and you're unconscious and then you just let that unconscious take over and and dance for you and it's like an almost an oxymoron when we call it conscious dancing because in my experience when i have had this sort of like shakti takeover of my body that we're literally we're talking about here it's like the music is moving my body on autopilot and I'm not controlling anything. I am a passenger in my body watching what it does to the music. You know what I'm talking about? I know exactly what you're talking about. And I think, I think the, the interesting part about it is you were just talking about how the substances for, for a lot of people, the substance is the entry point of being able to let go of that side of the brain that wants to control everything that's going on. You have to be able to imagine it before you can experience it. And the substance can help you get to that point if you have not really been able to. 
Exactly. Exactly. So like what my husband and I joke around is like the substance really is kind of like a, is, was just like a time portal to like super speed the charge of you being able to like get to this mental, emotional state. And then, and then it takes sometimes other little opportunities and experiences to realize that it wasn't the substance. It wasn't the substance. It was that energy that you allowed to take over and, and actually really powerful yogis take some of these substances and don't experience anything. Well, yeah, no change because they've already got that energy current hooked up on flowing already. Absolutely. Absolutely. So what was really interesting is, so I had this experience and started kind of waking up to the real, the realization that the substances had just kind of always just, that I could reach these other mental, emotional states without the substance. So that was kind of a, a wake up for me. Okay, let's fast forward. So we're talking about going back to the synchronicity here. Fast forward, I was at my last Walker Rusa. So wasn't the last one 2015? Yeah, I was there. Yeah, I was too. I, we went like every year between our first year to our last year. We were there and I went and I took the a hoop class while I was there. And I literally had a vision as was walking back from the hoop class back to my tent of me teaching yoga there. And it was kind of this weird hit. Like I was just walking and like had this vision of me teaching and it was just like, Oh, that's weird. And so I get back to the, um, the camp and I say to my husband, I was like, you know what? I said, wouldn't it be cool to teach yoga at a music festival? I just had this feeling that maybe this is something I'm supposed to do. And he was like, oh, but then you'd be working and it wouldn't be our reunion. It wouldn't be working. And that kind of just let that be. Well, a couple of years ago, I was, um, you know, my background is in fitness before I was just a yogi and I was starting to get really kind of stagnant with my, with my work and with my teaching and in meditation, I kept asking the question, what is the next right step? I'm stagnant. What is the next right step? And the message that I got was, you're supposed to be teaching on a different platform. And uh, what kept, I kept having flashes of that, that vision at Wakarusa. And so I, I like literally put it out to the universe in January of 2017, was just like, you know what? I think I'm supposed to be teaching yoga at music festivals. And if this is what I'm supposed to do, um, may j- I'm putting it out there. May the stars align, right? I kid you not, a month later, I get a message from a friend of mine who was like, I'm, I have a gig. I'm teaching hoop at Middlelands Music Festival that's happening outside of Houston, Texas, produced by Insomniac Events. Um, they're looking for a yoga instructor do you want to do it? And so it was like this synchronistic moment of just like, I said, yes. And then all of a sudden the opportunity was there and chance. It was, it was the weird, it was the most amazing experience because it was like, it was like a full circle experience for me of being able to take this community in which has gifted me and my husband with so much beauty and so much awesomeness to be able to then be able to not only participate, but also be of service. Oh, find your uniqueness too. I mean, that's what it's all about. You're being, your individuality is expressing as you fill these different roles and evolve from being inspired by your first festivals to being part of what inspires newcomers and veterans alike at the festival this year. It's awesome. <laughs> I would say Absolutely. too, my first Waka, I had visions of doing this right here. I had no idea what I was envisioning at all. It took me almost three years to get to the point of starting the show. And then starting the show, from starting the show and knowing it had something to do with festivals, but having no idea how to connect all the things I'm into, into festivals <laughs> to getting to where I'm at now, where I get to bring it to my favorite festival venue at a big event this year. I think it's a similar journey. It's cool to see that we're in, we're in sync on that. And, and what connects us is this magical Mulberry Mountain that backwards is 
at again this year. And even better yet, it's at around the same time that Waka's would have been. So it's like really a resurrection <laughs> type of thing. And I loved Backwoods before it moved to Arkansas when it was in Oklahoma, just to, uh, just to say like some of my greatest moments, you talk about your moments with your partner while, um, at Backwoods at the last Backwoods that was in Oklahoma, my partner and I realized that <laughs> we're definitely going to be like, Perma permanent partners. <laughs> like this is a life, a life mission thing that we share, you know, and that type of peak experience helped us reach that level of full openness and vulnerability to uh, something that would otherwise be scary to young people, which is like, man, we're going to commit to each other in this wide world of amazing, infinite people. And it's been so worth it. I'll say an amazing growth because of that conscious vulnerability we bring to it. But yeah, um, the openness that <laughs> Is at things like backwards. If you are the right person going there for the right intentions, it will be the backdrop for whatever personal transformation you want to make out of it. It's literally like a rite of passage of our modern times that you can customize and craft to your own, it, which can mean it could just be like sort of a debaucherous party where you wake up at the end and you're like, I don't remember half of that, but it ruled. Because that's going to teach you something eventually too. <laughs> or it's like this big consciousness expanding journey where you learn from workshops and you still rage on the dance floor and you meet a bunch of like-minded creators and get inspired to do what you do to a greater degree. And yeah, you got me fired up. So I had to go on that little rant. <laughs> no, no, that's completely cool. But yeah, exactly what you said as far as bringing my own unique creativity to it. And what was so beautiful was as I was, as I was teaching at Middlelands. And um, I had, I had something take over inside me. I literally had a voice inside during my, my first class voice inside that said, girl, you were made to do this, instill them with the tools, instill them with the tools that they need. And I don't know about you, but I've had some experiences where I was, um, where I was on different substances and had a difficult, where maybe they went off into some dark places where I had a difficult time of channeling my energy back into my body, where maybe I went into some dark corners of my soul. Well, I gotta, so I, I gotta decided, say those things actually open up your aura. So if you don't have really strong ways to defend those gaps <laughs> through high level of consciousness, then things can kind of jump on you in a sense from other people. I'll just leave it at that. So like one of the reasons why I don't recommend people actually jump on these substances, I recommend the path of what you describe, which is this, this body mind connection path. And yes, I learned from substances, but what I recommend is doing the work because <laughs> it'll, you'll get you there in a safer way, but continue your story. Sorry to cut off, cut off. Absolutely. But. No, no. Well, so I, I made the conscious choice and I am a firm believer in the power of diaphragmatic breathing, how diaphragmatic breathing can change your Life. I was hoping you would share us, uh, that with us, like do that for us so that we can follow along. You could guide us, but tell us about it first. <laughs> okay. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So, so we, as a human species have stopped using our diaphragm to consciously and intentionally breathe and to be able to use all of the muscles within your diaphragm to get all of the physical benefits that it reaps um, there's a lot, there's different muscles that you use to do it. Here's the interesting thing. All of those muscles that you use to diaphragmatically breathe literally help ground your physical body. So I made a conscious choice during that first festival that I was going to instill people with the tools to diaphragmatically breathe. And I even said, so tonight during your party, if it takes you off into the ethers, these right here, these, these muscles, these are the muscles you need to remember to bring yourself back into your body. And Chance, days later of getting back to the fest, I had someone private message me and tell me that he witnessed Someone who'd been to my class talked some of one of their, some of their friends out of a bad trip using the diaphragmatic breathing tools that I had taught during my class. So it wasn't the yes. person who came. Yeah. So it wasn't the person who came to my class who was having the bad trip. It was the person who was in the class who became someone else's angel 
so to speak. And guys listening, uh, if you've been with us a while, how many times have I kicked off the show with even like a mild to moderately long grounding exercise that I try to get you to do? This is why, because you don't have to be tripping to be tripping, you know, like any, any bad sauce that you get in your mind flavors, <laughs> you can literally do these grounding practices like diaphragmatic breathing or actually one thing that's cr- pretty badass that I just got to tell you about. I have to tell you about this. I got a grounding mat for in my office where I, it plugs into the grounding hole in the electrical socket. And I stand on this like miniature mat that literally does the same thing as if I was touching the earth while I'm inside on my computer. It's wild. <laughs> that is so cool. That is so cool. But the mes- the grounding muscles in my body, though, they need a lot of work. I'll just say I don't do this type of breathing enough. <laughs> Most of us don't. Most of us don't. We don't take the time to do it. And so the, the point being is, my point being is, is over the years, I've really been opened up to the idea that there are mental, emotional places and spaces within the brain that many of us find for the first time on substance. But doing substance on a regular basis is not sustainable for the human body. And so it's about cultivating practices that help us find those mental, emotional physiological states within the body that are sustainable, that we can do on an everyday basis to feel that good vibe, to feel that loving energy that is so palpable at the festival. So how do we bring it home? We, in, we, we instill people or plant seeds within people's consciousness of ideas that it is possible other ways and other other uh, paths are possible, but sometimes people have to, you don't even know that that's there. You know, if you don't know that another way is even there, then you don't start on the journey. So for me right now, as a workshop coordinator at Backwoods, it's because I want to gift everybody who comes to the festival, who's looking for something, looking for community, looking for a deeper way to get in touch with themselves, looking for a deeper way to connect to the earth. I want to empower people who come with something that they can take home with them to take the festival home within their being. Yeah. It just gave me a huge wave of emotion. (laughs) Just thinking about that. That's so important. Uh, Some of us have to really create our own, space for that at events like this, even though it's possible. But, you know, it's not that being around a bunch of good music and art doesn't have its own healing capacities in and of itself and mad inspiration ability. But you're like, you're what you're doing with workshop coordination is grounding all of that energy into something that you can take home. It's just like, you can look at a festival, honestly, as like a dream or a psychedelic experience in a fractal way in that <laughs> so much happens. It actually, the way time feels at a three day festival, it feels like you're there for a week, not three days. And I am I mean it, it's really weird. It's because you're doing a bunch of stuff that's not the same as what you do on a normal day. And that's why time is different. Because when you're just in the groove of doing the same thing every day, that's when time flies, so to speak. While you're in it, it drags ass. But then after it's over, there's nothing to remember. So it feels like it was short. So one reason to avoid... Uh, the real world for the weekend and come to backwoods right there is to get some more life <laughs> out of your life. Squeeze the juice out of that, that fruit. <laughs> Absolutely. And, and what I found to be my experiences is that a lot of people wander into a yoga class at a music festival, specifically, specifically, now let me be clear. There's so many different levels of music festivals, right? There's so many different styles and versions and so on. And, and from coming from um, from coming from Middlelands and Backwoods last year, that had more electronic dance music. Um, you, you find people who are like more attracted to say like des- desert dwellers and DJ Drez and that and that kind of stuff who are already maybe already in the yoga community. Um, but you have a lot of people at the at the EDM festivals. Granted, I know Backwoods is going to have a lot of jam bands, which is really cool. Um, but say EDM festivals, maybe, maybe they've never taken yoga before. 
And a lot of them wander in because their muscles are just freaking tight from raging all night long and they want to go to get a good stretch and their body hurts. And so they end up in, in a fat, in a yoga class. And it's like, for me, these people who had no intention, like have never practiced yoga before, have never, um, or just like getting into festival life, say the younger people, the younger people to me, it's like fertile soil of consciousness, you know, where you can come in. They don't even realize that they're hungry. And until they walk in and you start feeding them, you start feeding them seeds of inspiration. And all of a sudden they've like take in this full meal and they feel so nourished and so, and so satisfied and they this would happen to me. I was a square, but I started getting into electronic music. And I remember listening to it while I was like delivering pizzas and I was overweight and out of shape and thinking, well, I was listening to stuff that was coming out of like Europe. And I was like, I'll never go to a show with this type of music because this is in Europe. Then I, some friends dragged me to Wakarusa and I found out that electronic music from the United States is great too. And that was, my, I was hungry for what you're talking about. And I met just the right type of people there to really awaken and nourish that desire for, for more out of life. Absolutely. So let's talk about the festival or let's talk about the workshops. Is that okay? Yeah, this is a perfect, yeah, this is really a perfect time for it actually. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. So with that in mind of really wanting to, to offer seeds uh, that will grow into new thought and also to offer services to help smooth out all the rough edges because just before I go really deep into the into the exact um, workshops, one thing that Chance said, when, one thing that you said was, you know, the music and the movement and the, and the festival itself can have all of these therapeutic benefits and, and exactly. So what happens is, is just the course of the fest starts to get your aura, starts to get your penile gland activated, starts to get your heart open. And all of those things that we're, that we're trying to do with any yoga practice anyway, the festival just naturally does that. So it's my desire to come in and provide some of the, um, some of the experiences then that are going to build upon that, to heighten that. To it's people like you that anchor that actually in like it's not the festival per se that's doing it. It's the people that are there that are like you that are active and awakened and uh, their chakras spinning up. They link together and they form literally a big electromagnetic field. There's a point where you pass while you're on your way to a festival where you feel an energy shift and you go, we're here. I mean, there's a bubble. It's a literal energy bubble. You can perceive it if you are sensitive. Absolutely. <laughs> it's amazing. And that's one of the things actually that I love about Mulberry Mountain. And let me just speak on that real quick as, as a venue. Some people would hate this, but I think this is what is the magic. As, as you're driving up the mountain, at least for me, I lose data and I lose self-service. And, and so it's literally yeah. like you're entering into your, this vortex that pulls you in. So once you're there, let me share with you what's up. Okay, so um, we have a sunrise set every morning at Backwoods. So what you can do, if you're one of those people who go to the sunrise set, wander over to the workshop area as soon as it's done. Because at 8 a.m. each day of music, which I guess the first day won't be after the sunrise set, but if you get there and you're up early, um, there will be a sound healing every morning at 8 a.m. So say on, say on Saturday morning, if you are up all night long at the sunrise set, you can wander over. We have two amazing musicians who are going to co-create an hour of just beautiful vibration that will hopefully take you off into the ether. So then you can go back to your tent and you can get a good rest. Can I so, speak on sound healing for just one moment? Absolutely. Just because I, something was kind of coming in, like butting its way in, like wanting to be said. Energy basically can't be created or destroyed. <laughs> it just changes form. So when you're getting beat down by all these mad bass subsonic frequencies and like huge speakers for hours on end. And if you're not wearing earplugs, which please guys wear earplugs. I'm saying this to myself too. Please just wear them. Like really get nice ones. Uh, <laughs> but... um 
that is all contained in your body now. And like, that's part of the ear ringing effect. Your eardrums are still vibrating because it's like hitting a gong so hard that it, it vibrates for like two, three days. <laughs> and that's the kind of energy impact that these sound waves can have. So the sound healing is like a way of discharging that or any type of grounding and meditation practice helps with it. But the sound healing is literally like, like uh, letting air out of the overinflated balloon or something like that. I don't know how else to put it. It's really, really, really helpful. It's really helpful. It, uh, it helps ease. It, it helps soothe the nerves. You know, our, our central nervous system gets all fired up during, um, during, the music, during the music and everything that's hard bass like that. And so it just helps soothe the central nervous system for sure. And it helps you slow down. And, and when you're in a sound healing you naturally start to diaphragmatically breathe. And so it starts to stimulate the, the vagus nerve, which helps calm the whole body. So we're going to have Savannah Serenades there who's going to be playing her cello. And we have another um, amazing yogi named Abigail who's going to be there with her singing bowls. and So her crystal singing bowls and her gong. So literally you'll have an hour of cello, gong, and singing bowls like lullabying you into magnificent ease in order to go back and chill out in your tent if you're up at the sunrise set if you you have if you weren't at the sunrise set then it will be a really great start to your day so then there's that so then right after that savannah serenades is going to be doing a workshop on intro to astrology so astrology is something new that i've recently got into um some people think it's just maybe a little entertainment some people really really live their life based on the stars. And I think more than anything, the reason why I wanted to share this with people intro to astrology is for some people, um, it's a way to help realize that everything's not about you, right? That there's sometimes like a bigger picture and something going on in the universe than the small, small microcosm of the drama that's going on in your life. So sometimes it's, it's nice to open up the picture. It's like realizing that, yeah, you have a script. You could just check that out. And uh, if you're having trouble progressing, follow the script or freestyle if you're feeling like you can. <laughs> but it's definitely there. Astrology is something we've talked about in the past. I love that you're bringing it to Backwoods. And I mean, I said we've talked about it in the past on the show in fairly good depth with a couple of guests, but definitely not enough to have exhausted the topic. It is it is basically one of the best reflections of how the cosmos is actually inside of us that there is. And yeah, an introduction will also be entertaining as well. So I wholeheartedly endorse that people go to this workshop, but also probably all the workshops I would endorse more, more than likely. We have laughter yoga two on Saturday and Sunday. I've never done no laughter yoga before, but I'm excited to try it. Anything that helps uh, just release some serotonin and, and get the endorphins flowing in the body to not t make, take ourselves so seriously. And I what's his name? The, the yogi that does this? Michael Murphy. Yeah, I think we're going to talk to him on here coming up someday this year, too. Oh, that'd be great. So, you know, I don't have a lot to say about laughter yoga, but that I think it's really cool and really interesting and that you should go try it. Um, on the Friday, so Michael's only going to be there two days, Saturday and Sunday during laughter yoga. So on Friday, I really encourage you go, to go to the intro to Pranayam class um, with Shanti Nolan. So Pranayam, well, in, in yoga, prana is means breath. It also means life force and spirit. So some as we were saying is I'm it, my intention to empower people with some of the tools to be able to go back and experience some of these other mental, emotional states outside of the festival, outside of, outside of substance use, your breath is so freaking amazing. It's so freaking powerful. There are ways you can boost your energy. There are ways that you can calm you down. There are ways to detox the body. There are ways to, I have this daily practice that is all about breath control that helps, um, that stimulates my penile gland to release microdoses of DMT in my brain every day. Yeah, so, I have blasted off on breath before. I've blasted off from cracking my back before in a good way, like hanging from something by both hands and letting my weight and my lower spine just fully expand out. It literally, you get like a blast off micro DMT trip. It's crazy. 
Yeah. Yeah. You can totally, some, some of those states in your brain that you think are induced by drugs, you can get there without them, but you have to know how. You and have don't to know crash. <laughs> yeah. You don't crash. Absolutely. You don't crash. All of a sudden you just like open your eyes and you're sober and you're here and you're all good. Again. I think DMT is like stealing your dad's car keys when you're a four-year-old, but it's God's spaceship. <laughs> Dude, like I said to my husband the other day, I was like, you know, when you walk through my yoga room early in the morning and my chimes have gone off, but I'm still sitting there and I'm not getting up. It's because I'm in my DMT state in my brain and I'm just really soaking it up before I stand up and walk away. It's, before you stand um, up and go, I don't even remember what just happened, but yeah, I'm yeah, so exactly. Glad. <laughs> exactly. So go to intro to Pranayam with, with Shanti and I'll tell you what. You're going to want her on your podcast panel because she's, she's my best friend. She's also one of my greatest teachers. She will you was be my recruiter for that. Uh, yeah, I totally will. She was, she was raised on a, the, um, an Osho commune up in, up in Oregon. This is your and bestie so, that you were telling me about. Yes, my bestie. So you need to go soak up everything from Shanti. Okay. Another thing that she is doing on, on Saturday with her, with her partner, Jason Nolan, they're going to be leading, um, a workshop it's called intro to meditate i mean music for meditation and i'm gonna i'm gonna be really honest it's chanting it's chanting my name's and chance. I have a, huh that's my name chance right chance so, <laughs> chance. so for many people the idea of chanting is really woo woo and so on um but chanting and singing when you sing with people together in unison your breaths sync up and your hearts start to vibe on the same wavelength. So like, so Shanti has this beautiful way of getting everybody singing along together. Um, and it, and it doesn't have to do with any religion. Okay. Just singing along together. And by doing it, that's its own pranayam. So you're stimulating your vagus nerve, you're stimulating your penile gland. And because you're singing with a group of people, your, your hearts all start to sink in unison. So all of a sudden your level of community just like, Okay, so if someone thinks that they're like Christianity would prevent them from being into this type of thing, I would just say original Christianity pretty much incorporated all this type of mysticism and more as ways to bring, invite the, the Holy Spirit into the divine temple, which is your body. It's just different ways of expressing it. And all it really is, is just being here and now in the healthiest, most vibrant way possible, right? I mean, Absolutely. It's awesome. And Shanti has a gift of breaking down walls behind between spiritual and religious backgrounds. Um, before every chant that you'll do, she'll, she'll tell you a story about what it's about, who it's behind, the energy behind it, and the way that you can... Um, no matter your physio, physio, your physiological, no matter your philosophical belief system or your spiritual religious belief system, you're able to tap in to the energy that's truly behind um, the intention of the song, you know, whether it be, you know, opening the heart, whether it be tapping into infinite realms, so on. So this ties into a really important question. So let me ask that before you move on past this breathing thing. Yes. Or I can shoot it at you right now. Um, how our, how does our breathing capacity connect to our body's natural ability to heal and regenerate? This is something I really want. I know that we have more workshops to talk about and probably only about eight or 10 minutes to do it. But I really wanted this to go in the free show because this is like the, bow to, the foundation of your health and energy pyramid is this knowledge right here. Absolutely. So, so the reason why the breath is so important in regards to your body's healing is they say that 90, about 90% 90 of all illness and all disease is related to stress. And the number one thing that you can do to reduce your stress levels today is diaphragmatically breathe. That is the number one thing that you can do to help reduce your stress levels. Because one thing, let me, let me just, so you have your brain. And you have this nerve called the vagus nerve. And the vagus nerve literally zigzags its way through every single organ in your body. It wraps around the pharynx and the larynx and, and it goes right down through the midline of the diaphragm. 
when the vagus nerve is stimulated, it increases the, it, it improves the function of every single organ in your body. I'm going to say that again. It improves the function of every single organ in your body. It's so the serpent how, that wraps around the tree of life. I mean, literally, that's the best way of putting it. That is the Kundalini serpent in our bodies, if you ask me. Well, it's it's very much linked to it for sure. I could like go the deeper. The physical to, component of it, I should say, like a reflection there, of it. There you go. Exactly. So when you use those muscles to diaphragmatically breathe, your your diaphragm literally massages the vagus nerve. So when you say literally lay down and practice diaphragmatically breathing, consciously slowing down the inhale and the exhale. So the diaphragm does a full long stroke to the vagus nerve, imagining a massage therapist stroking your back all the way from shoulder down to your glutes, all the way back up the long strokes, or even the way they would stroke all the way from your hip down to your knee, nice and long fluid strokes. What it does is it relaxes all of the organs in your body, especially when you can, the magic number is the count of 11. When you can inhale and exhale to a count of 11, all of your internal organs in your central nervous system have relaxed. And when you are in the relaxed state is when your body can heal itself. So that's why they say that um, that's why, you know, you, why sleep is important, right? When you're relaxed and your when your body is relaxed, you start to heal itself. So you can consciously through the practice of diaphragmatic breathing and conscious relaxation, you can improve the function of every cell in your body and simultaneously create space for healing, so the more tapped in we are to our diaphragmatic breath, I mean, so let's just look at it this way. Our diaphragm is like any other muscle in the body. The more you exercise it, the more in shape it gets, the more it finds its, its strength through just being alive and being present. So the, the more times you do squats. Muscle memory. It's exactly it. It's muscle memory. Exactly. So the more things that we do on a regular basis within a community that helps us really practice that deep diaphragmatic breathing, it allows our body during its natural resting state to memorize, like you said, muscle memory, go right back into that. And people who have these chronic stress disorders and diseases have one main thing in common. Do you know what that is? They suck at breathing. Yeah. They chest breathe. They chest breathe. And your, your body needs oxygen. Your body needs oxygen. So a way that I've been conceptualizing it lately is that, like I, like I alluded to, there's a pyramid that's a energy pyramid, and the bottom of it is breath. And the next one up is probably sleep. And the next one up is, I don't know, maybe food or water, food and then water, most likely. Because there's water and food. And then uh, beyond that is maybe exercise. So to even have the energy to get up the ladder to the point where you're taking care of your exercise, if that seems like something that's really hard to even get into yoga, start taking care of your breath and then start taking care of your sleep, which will be easier if you're taking care of your breath because you can do these practices to relax yourself into sleep. And then start taking care of your diet. You'll find it's easier to make better dietary choices if you don't feel tired because you don't think you need to take energy from food. And then cleaning up your water, you don't even have to try on that one. Just get, just make sure you don't drink tap water from the government. <laughs> you know, like, um, anyway, this is all just sort of a little preach moment where I wanted to say that in relation to meals of food and drinking water, Ox the air the quality of your breathing, the quality of your breathing is a meal that your body desperately needs on a regular basis, just like you need to eat meals of food. You need to eat your breath meal. Uh, thank you. <laughs> Absolutely. And, you know, maybe that will be, uh, let me tell you a little bit more about the workshops. So maybe that might be a really good place to end this, um, this free, the free part of the episode is, is, is talking people through a diaphragmatic breath practice real quick, because whether, whether you have high blood pressure whether you have high cholesterol or not high, yeah, high blood pressure, whether you have anxiety, whether you have depression, 
Um, whether you have issues even with, with other health factors, I've seen people get off di- diabetes medications through practicing diaphragmatic breathing because epigenetics takes over. Like you can turn, you can turn genes on and off through the ability to relax, which comes with diaphragmatic breathing. This is its so, own episode topic, honestly. <laughs> it is. It's truly its own episode topic. So let's move on. Let's talk about that more in a second. Let me just tell you the last thing, couple things about the workshops. Yeah. Um, Okay, cool. So you're going to have a chance to, to, to do yoga with, every, with me every day there. Um, I teach something that's called Yoga Electrified. Basically, I take the music of all the amazing musicians that we're there to see, and I put them to a really kick-ass playlist. And so it's a really fun time to come stretch out your muscles um, within my yoga classes. I teach a guided meditation every day, which there will be, it will start out very um, with diaphragmatic breathing. Then we'll go into systematic loca- um, systematic relaxation. So I will teach you guys, if you come each time, the pathway. If you like yoga at all, this is the time to do it. I mean, this isn't going to, to drive across town in the middle of a busy day to go to a class or putting on a YouTube video that you've done 30 times before. This is like live in the moment, fun with music, with your best friends yoga. There's no better time and place to do it. I mean, I'm talking myself into it right now to make sure I don't miss it at all. But like, let's all be there. Everyone listening now that's going to the festival. Let's just like flood Aubrey's yoga tent to the max. I would love that. I love that. And just, you know, I had people put in applications for yin yoga and kundalini yoga and all the different forms of asana that's there. And I'm just going to be real. I got this gig negotiating myself of being the main yoga instructor and that all the other workshops were going to be about knowledge and expanding the mind. Do we recommend people just do renegade yoga where they teach people yoga on the fly out in the middle of the festival at different spots? Absolutely. Guys, if you feel passionate, if you're a yin teacher, like roll out your mats and be like, guys, let's stretch out and 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 lead it. It there. doesn't have to be confined to one space and time on a schedule. It should be like part of our lives. I found myself I find myself just stretching randomly when I'm like waiting somewhere or hanging out instead of just standing there like a a weird stiff weirdo. <laughs> yeah. If if you are someone who has these tools to be able to share them with the community. Don't let, don't, don't hesitate. Step up and be that, be that gift to the people around you. I just had, you know, this was, there was only so much time and energy and space. And so we made the conscious choices backwards, a production team, instead of it being all different forms of asana, which asana is the physical practice of yoga, that we would try to make there a wide variety. So in regards to physical movement, you have the opportunity to practice yoga with me every day. There is also going to be hoop classes every day with local, um, with a local amazing hooper, Katie Sunshine, which Katie and I met at the 2015 Walker Rusa. So it's all full circle for Katie and I. Um, and there's also acro yoga every day. So there's going to be ways to move the body and move your energy. Um, but then here, this is really cool. So J. Quentin Means is, he's going to be talking about ancient religions and philosophies, ancient symbols and rituals. So basically like we have the religion that we know within the West right now, which is, you know, the different levels of Christianity and also Buddhism and Hinduism and so on. But there's like, there's like old mysteries. There's old groups of thinking and philosophies, which I can't even, I, I can't, I'm not, I'm not an expert. There's syncretism to how they all connect, actually. It's actually one mystery. There's only one great mystery. That's what the indigenous of this continent called it. Yes. Great spirit, great mystery. All these all these um, things you're talking about are definitely part of the same thing. <laughs> and just, uh, it's awesome. I'm excited for that workshop for sure. We got to... We got to get on over to the plus extension, though. Uh, we've we're going <laughs> to okay. turn into a pumpkin here, so <laughs> uh, let's do that. Thanks for being here. Uh, give them your website and uh, where they can get backwards tickets, where they can stay tuned for more knowledge. Do all the plugs, and then we'll get on the other side with that diaphragmatic breathing meditation to kick off. Okay, sounds great. So if you want to get your tickets to Backwoods, just go to backwoodsmusicfestival.com. 
tickets are there. Um, if you want to learn anything more about um, about me or get in contact, uh, you can go to AubreyWarren.com. If you click on the yoga and meditations tab, there is a resources. So if you're wanting to learn this diaphragmatic breath practice that you're, maybe you're not a plus subscriber, which you should be, but if you're not and you want to get access to that, then go to AubreyWarren.com, click on yoga and meditation, and then click on resources. And you can find my free guided meditation and breath practices there. So see you guys, we're not cutting you out of the guided breath practice. It's already available to you. <laughs> we just uh, are so grateful that you came and shared this time with us. I've had a lot of fun and I'm looking forward to bringing even more interesting things up with you on the other side of this extension. Absolutely. Friends, too many humans are coming together for the creation of this festival who feel like this shit is bigger than them. So if we feel like this is bigger than us, then something is going to come through that is bigger than us. And don't you want to be a part of that? Don't you want to be a part of that unfolding? So, you know, if, if you're like, I'm not sure about the music, then come and enjoy all of the workshops and the ma- mind expanded stuff. And the art. Like, huh? And the artists. Oh, my gosh. Like painters and things are going to be off the chain at this thing. Absolutely. It's not, you know, if, if EDM or the music that's on the lineup isn't your bag, isn't your bag, that's fine. There's going to be so many other things for you to dive into. If you hate it, then just come hang out with me the entire festival at my booth and I will entertain you somehow. Absolutely. Go enter, go get entertained with chance. And (laughs) and if if you're wanting to find me outside of this, uh, I'm, Aubrey Monk Warren on Facebook, friend me. I'm getting, get inspired with Aubrey Warren Instagram. I'm Ob Warren, or you can go to AubreyWarren.com and you can find me there. If you're wanting to work one-on-one with me, whether it be holistic life coaching, or if you're wanting some yoga education, that go to AubreyWarren.com and send me a private message. I'm really excited to connect with everybody that the interverse everybody that the interverse has to offer. Speaking of which, I want to leave you with this chance because I was listening to a Russell Brand podcast yesterday. And in his podcast, they introduced the word noetic. And noetic, the definition of noetic is the internal world. And I thought that was so perfect for going on the interverse. So this was definitely a noetic conversation (laughs) on the interverse. That's what we shoot for. (laughs) We point the microscope inward, hopefully. And this has been a blast. I'll make sure and get your call to people to come connect with you online into the free show as well. And yeah, thank you so much for the time and the bit of extra time. Had an excellent experience hanging out with you. Can't wait to comprehend your full radiance in person along with many other completely legendary people. Come join us on the mountain and don't forget that, that your body has more wisdom than you can ever imagine. You just have to figure out how to open your heart and be able to quiet your mind to be able to listen to what that wisdom is speaking. So if you wander into our workshops, hopefully we'll empower you with some of the tools to do that. Absolutely. And they, you will empower us with your light and energy and love and enthusiasm you bring to us. So help us as the workshop people by coming out to them and just uh, sharing what you love, what you're passionate about and experiencing it with us. We're so excited for all of you that we're going to see there. And this is going to be yet another peak experience and a life full of awesome shit. <laughs> all awesome. right. Thanks, Aubrey. And Thanks everyone for listening and we'll see plus members in just a few moments.
everyone. I am really glad you joined me for this episode. It was one of my favorites in a long time. How many times do I actually say that? I don't know. Seems like everything I do with the podcast is like my favorite. So we'll just say that this episode came out of the inspiration that created Interverse in the first place, which is music festivals. The amazing transformative power of seeing a bunch of people creating cool stuff and being nice to each other for several days on end outside away from the city. Aubrey was a perfect guest, I have to say. I wish you could have seen her the way I was seeing her in the video of our chat because we were on webcams and I don't publish the video aspect, but she's just radiating with like pink and purple and pastel blue aura colors just flying off of her. She's so awesome and energetic. We had a blast. I know that you noticed that because you were with us. And she said some really, really wise things like that the more that we get in tune with our own physical bodies, the quicker we'll start to pay attention to the entire body, which is the earth. You have to be connected to yourself before you care about clean water. I think that's just brilliant. It makes total sense. You got to start at home and move your way out. Like right now, what I'm going to have to do at home today is declutter and do some chores and housework and clean my windows. <laughs> I've been reading a feng shui book and it said that windows and mirrors have something to do with like your eyes and your clarity of vision and your self-perception and to keep that stuff clean if it's in your space because your actual place that you live, your dwelling is like a reflection of your psyche and your body is your dwelling, your primary dwelling. <laughs> You got two homes, your body and then the earth. And then I guess whatever home you live in with your body. So three homes, <laughs> but they're all on the earth. Ultimately, I'm so excited to be talking about Backwoods Festival. I want to remind you guys that the dates of that shindig is May 31st to June 2nd happening on Mulberry Mountain in Arkansas. So if you're even within like three hours away, you should really consider coming because it's totally worth your time. You'll meet so many like-minded people friendly, fun-loving, creative, cool people. That festival community is pretty woke. And I just love any type of conversation like we had here today about bringing the magic of festivals home within our being to transform what some would call the real world, what I would call the fake matrix world. And of course, as usual, this time we had a phenomenal Plus extension. If you're not familiar with Plus, somehow I haven't explained it well enough. That's where we do an entire second hour of the show. And you can become a Plus subscriber on Patreon, patreon.com forward slash interverse, where you'll get access to an entire special, unique Interverse Plus RSS feed that you can plug into your favorite podcast player and have an entirely new version of Interverse to check out every week. Replaces the old feed for you and gives you a two plus hour show instead of the one hour. And as you might imagine, we go quite a bit deeper in the second hour because we're already good and warmed up. I'm not asking you to pay me for like just random conversations and small chat that I'm having with, you know, whoever. I like to think it's a lot more than that, that there's something constructive going on here. For me, there is. I mean, the first thing we even did in this plus extension was a guided diaphragmatic breathing session. And I've been doing that ever since, like for the last several days, this has been on my mind. Whenever I remind myself to breathe, now I'm breathing diaphragmatically, which is a whole nother level. And I can feel the stress relief. I mean, wow. And I'm not trying to like gate that content from you with a paywall. You can go find Aubrey's website and find a guide to this, or I'm sure dozens, hundreds of people that teach this exact thing online somewhere. But besides the breathing exercise and the plus extension, we did talk about some really unique and cool stuff. I'll just give you a quick rundown of what we did talk about in the plus extension. Besides the diaphragmatic breathing, she gave advice about using the mind to activate muscles and how to do that in a balanced way. Why the no pain, no gain mindset isn't exactly a good game plan. Transforming our lives with awareness of the pelvic floor muscles. That's actually part of the diaphragmatic breathing thing, but it wound up spiraling off into an entire really interesting conversation about Generally, just getting in tune with your body so you can connect with the Earth's body. We talked about using your reaction to color to gauge your own personal chakra health and the root chakra epidemic in our society, the connection between the sacral chakra and the third eye, 
talked about learning metaphysical healing practices by playing with selenite crystals, one of my favorite things to talk about. Apparently, we have that in common. And how Aubrey joined rave culture and became the festival fairy godmother. And with rave culture as our topic, we got into candy bead bracelet magic, blur handshakes, and breath sinking hugs. <laughs> And we talked about getting serious on our health so that life in a body is more fun. And of course, couldn't have really been complete without talking about a mystical and synchronicity filled experience that Aubrey had at the great Bob Marley's mausoleum. Fascinating stuff. Like I said, plus is a lot more than just small talk, just like the first hour, but more and better. But if you do need more Interverse, and for some reason you're not going to shell out the $5 donation to get access to the Plus extensions, we do have more content than ever. We're just bramming with content up on this channel. <laughs> you might not have noticed it on the main RSS feed because I haven't been able to slap it out there yet, but I've been doing live streams almost every day. I finally got a setup really rocking where I can just hop on and start talking and get people to engage with me and We've even done a call-in show or two. It's been amazing. Right now, you can catch those live streams as they're happening on Facebook by following the Interverse page and turning on page notifications. Then you'll definitely not miss out. I know I talk about how lame Facebook is all the time, but for now, it's still pretty much the best way I can engage with a lot of you at once live and get questions and answers happening in real time. So go go over to Facebook if you've actually got one. If you don't have a Facebook, fuck yeah, good for you. Fuck Facebook and just check it out on YouTube or something when we upload it there later. I'm working on getting a way to actually stream to more than one place at once. So sit tight on that if you really hate Facebook. But if you don't, if you're already there, go follow Interverse and turn on post notifications and catch us live. Talking with Pharaoh Tahar on a lot of these, a lot of these live streams about manifesting more abundance into our lives using the Fibonacci sequence and an experiment of spending imaginary money, which actually I'm going to go do my daily spend on that experiment today. I'll give you a quick rundown of the community experiment that you can join us for and go catch up with our daily live streams on. Each day we're spending money on paper for things that we want or need or want to help others with. Anything goes, no wrong answers. Starting with $1,000 on day one, $1,000 on day two, $2,000 on day three, 3,000 on day four, 5,000 on day five, 8,000, 13,000, 21,000. You get the picture. We're going with the Fibonacci sequence, which is nature's perfection, <laughs> nature's abundance code, optimum growth, maximum efficiency, minimum redundancy. That's what the Fibonacci sequence is all about. And I, for one, have already experienced some... I would call it minor, but how is any miracle or synchronicity actually minor? Some miracles, though. I mean, nothing like life-changingly huge, but small steps actually do change our lives. So I've seen the magic already working. I want to hear what your experiences are with doing this, too, because it's a really easy way to retune your imagination, to be ready to give and receive, not just receive, but give. Part of the experiment results for me has been that I've felt myself to be more giving in just a short amount of time of doing this. So we've got all that we need. We are all that we need. It's just a matter of believing it or knowing it, actually, not even believing it, knowing. Yeah. But there are more live streams even than that that I've been getting up to, including an epic one with Nathan Crabtree where we talked about upcoming Freedom Fest at the beginning of May. I'd love to see some of you local people out there as well. And that event is free. Bring yourself, bring your crafts, bring your art, bring your message, bring your truth, bring your music, bring your dog. <laughs> Anything goes. It's Freedom Fest, baby. And I'm stoked on that one happening at the very beginning of May. So let's get out there and um, live our lives. It's been awesome being with you guys for an hour or two, depending on if you're on Plus. Please join Plus. I mean... Well, you're really cutting yourself short. If Interverse is something that you get something out of and you're not on Plus, you're not only getting half of it, you're only getting half out of it that you could. So I'm not here to beg you to do that. I'm here to help you with knowledge that empowers me. And if you want it, it's there. And there's always the free show. But you know you're missing out if you're not on Plus. And I love you either way. I'm so glad that you're with me, tuning in, 
showing up for yourself, looking for ways to use your imagination and your creativity to bring more love into your life and share more love with others. That's what life is about. One more time, I'll remind you about Backwoods Festival, though, May 31st to June 2nd on Mulberry Mountain. I will be there with Interverse doing a live podcast panel. I'll be joined by people that have been on the show before that are also at Backwoods and also whoever's in the audience will have the opportunity to pipe in and make your voice heard, contribute to the conversation. Backwoods is going to be full of fun, learning, music, connection, community. And some of the music you'll hear there is Cadella. If you go check out their set there, you will not be disappointed. I love Cadella, great friends of mine, and I've playing their music in the outro section. You've already heard it in previous episodes, but I don't care. You can never get enough Cadella. So I picked them for this episode. Check them out on SoundCloud forward slash Cadella, soundcloud.com forward slash Cadella. So groovy, healing music of bass boosted blissness. I don't know. Love it. And I don't know if there's anything else I need to tell you about. Probably not. I'll go ahead and I'll go ahead and wrap this up and deliver it in a nice little tidy package. I'm gonna use a lot of pink for this cover art. I can tell you now, it just fits with Aubrey. Thanks again, Aubrey, for coming on the show. We're best friends now. I love you. I love everyone listening. Take real good care of yourselves and remember that wholeness is what it's all about. <laughs> <laughs>